Well, welcome to the first episode of Podcast Tips with Rob Greenlee. And my name is Rob Greenlee and wanted to welcome you on the live stream today. Uh, it's great to have you here with me for the inaugural first episode. These are always exciting episodes to do when you're just starting a, a new show and uh, you always have butterflies and you're always trying to, you know, keep Keep your composure together, make sure you're clicking on all the buttons right, especially in the StreamYard software to make sure that experience goes out good. So I just wanna say thank you and welcome uh, to, to the show. Um, as the name implies, this is a podcast that's primarily focused on trying to share tips about podcasting. And um, But what I'd like to do with this series uh, is to explore the present and near future and far future around the merging of audio and video podcasting um, and its expanding significance by, by really discussing some very practical ideas um, and also learn from you, right? As a viewer of this, uh, you are experiencing using new tools and new ways of creating content and um, and have tips to share as well. And we definitely want to encourage you to share that with us in the comments. And um, we're going to bring on, like I have with my guest here, uh, Ross Brands, some amazingly successful uh, content creators that have been doing a combination of live streaming and increasingly um, thinking more about podcasting um, as we see the, the audio and video worlds kind of colliding on each other right now in a lot of discussion. It's creating a lot of consternation in um, in all sectors of the creator um, economy and and what podcasters and YouTubers are struggling with right now as YouTube kind of brings podcasting together. Uh, and th the show is going to share some insights and some tips to really make you a smarter content creator. And that's really the goal here. And and we want to bridge that gap really between audio and video podcasting and bring listeners to kind of a new frontier of podcasting too that's being worked on by the podcast industry that those in streaming may not know about. It's a podcasting 2.0 initiative and, and how that really actually combines with live streaming. And uh, a lot of people might be surprised that there is a connection between podcasting and live streaming uh, that's coming in s some of the new technology in uh, podcasting that the industry is starting to push. And then there's the old reliable RSS and and how direct upload is becoming more and more of a thing. So, so um, I want to welcome uh, to the show Ross Brand, who's probably not tremendously unfamiliar to this community on StreamYard. Um, he's been involved in uh, live streaming, author of uh, 100 live streaming and digital media predictions books, and is also the host of a long running um, stream leaders report and panel show of which I'm a, one of his panelists that we do every um, Thursday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, where we talk about kind of current events and things like that on a, on a live stream. So welcome, Ross, thanks for joining me. Hey, Rob, thanks so much for having me and congratulations yeah. on the new show. And uh, I love this layout and I love um, of course, you're probably, I can't think of anybody better really to bring podcasting and knowledge of the industry and the history and the different ways people can use podcasting uh, to a platform like StreamYard, which is now really built out with all the functions that a podcaster needs. So it's a ph phenomenal marriage and uh, I wish you all the best on the, on the show. Well, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that a lot. And, and it's certainly something that um, I'm really kind of focused on uh, trying to help uh, some new platforms, you know, like StreamYard to to better integrate with the podcast medium, because I, I'm seeing these trends, just like what we're going to talk about on the episode today, um, that around this convergence, really, uh, b between being a YouTube creator and being a podcaster and how that world is a little strange at times. Um, <laughs> But it also is a is an interesting kind of milestone, really, in my journey in podcasting too. I've been doing podcasting for about 19 years now, so it's it's something that I have a long history in. I started on radio, and started making my show available as a stream uh, back in the early days, 
uh, back when there really wasn't much online video. So um, it, it was really kind of a kind of an evolution for me. And then I started doing a live show called the New Media Show. You can see the the, the album art behind you up there on the wall. Um, that's a show I've been doing for 12 years, and that's also a live streaming show. So I came out of audio and have been evolving more and more into video. So this partnership that I have with StreamYard is is really, um, really interesting for me as I think about my journey and being a being a digital media creator and and trying to use this medium as a really a content marketing strategy as well as a a way to kind of bring authenticity to to the media landscape and we I, I talk about that a lot and that's really really at the heart of of my passion in this and so Ross I wanted to kind of dive in I know you have a a YouTube channel it's at uh, at live stream universe and yes and i i wanted to show that page so people can see kind of kind of what you're doing and so they have an idea um of what the type of things that you're doing but i mean you've been bringing um you know topics uh, around podcasting i don't know if you can see it now on the screen yeah. but I, you've been bringing topics about podcasting. You've been bringing topics about uh, live streaming to places like uh, Rumble, and live streaming to uh, uh, other platforms as well. But you know, you've done some video, and you've done a lot of a lot of support for Streamyard over the years, and helping people understand how to take advantage of those platforms too. So you can you can kind of see on your page. So how long have you been a um, content creator on YouTube? So I, I got on YouTube. I first started live streaming in late 2015. Mm -hmm. And shortly thereafter, I got on YouTube. But I wasn't really doing YouTube, if, if that makes sense. I was mm -hmm. literally taking the episodes after I streamed them on Blab and uploading mm -hmm. them and putting like episode. Like I was treating YouTube like an archive. And if somebody watched, fine. But like, here's where I'm going to store the videos and mm -hmm. then probably after a few years i realized that there's a strategy to youtube and um i can't say i've ever gone all in like going 24 7 or you know even like okay i'm gonna do a video every week in terms of uh, uploaded but somewhere along the line the last couple of years i've i've decided that youtube's gonna be my maybe in the last year or so i i just decided youtube's gonna be the primary place where i stream i may multi-stream mm -hmm. to Twitter or other places, but streaming to YouTube, I think is, is great because it's, the, the content has a long shelf life there. And, and yeah. so even if it doesn't take off the day that you, you do the broadcast five months later, it can, it can get a following because people are searching for that topic and so forth. Um, so it has a much longer shelf life than, than content mm -hmm. on other platforms, but oh, yeah. I always say you should go where your audience is. So, um, for a long time, I'd say my audience was on Facebook for live streaming mm -hmm. and that's, mm -hmm. that's why that started out as, you know, once I left Blab, that was kind of my primary platform for probably about four or five years. Yeah. I know my journey with my, uh, YouTube channel, um, is like a 16 year journey. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I started just uh, just uploading some you know demo videos and things like that that I did back in the early days of podcasting. If you go to my my profile at Rob Greenley, uh, you can go back in time, back into like uh, 2011, whatever, back when I was working at some early podcast distribution companies uh, that were utilizing like uh, you know dumb phones, not smartphones. I mean, so all of us today have. <laughs> smartphones but back dumb then phones. we called them dumb phones so <laughs> so you can see some demos of the early kind of podcasting listening platforms that existed on these uh what i call dumb phones back in the early days of mobile and that was even uh just as we were seeing um data plans coming to mobile devices um you know now we just take it for granted it's on everybody's phone right so you don't right. even think about it twice but there was a time when you didn't get um much data on your mobile phone and getting a podcast on your mobile phone was something that was unique and so i have some pictures of me playing podcasts into my car as i'm driving down the street through this mobile app that i was working on in seattle back in 2005 
and uh it's and you can just kind of contrast that to what we are today hmm. and it's actually really kind of fascinating so if you want to take a take a journey in into the past uh to see what where podcasting originated uh there's a lot of a lot of videos in there and i've also made a lot of a lot of videos about my experience with electric cars um i bought an electric car back in 2011 and actually made videos about some of the early electric cars so those videos have more traffic <laughs> like i've <laughs> i've got almost a million views just on my on my electric car videos and I built the, the world's largest glass of orange juice uh, back in the 90s. And I know the, the whole story to this, but um, there is a video of, of, a, of a TV station doing a segment on my world's largest glass of orange juice. And that's gotten like, uh, like 50,000 views or something like that. So that's kind of my journey. It's only been like really in the last, I would say in the last year or so that I've really been a little bit more focused on YouTube and trying to do some stuff there because I built this, you know, I have this content up there that's gotten a lot of views, but I was just kind of ignoring it, which is kind of like it's more like archive content, really, most of it. So, but it shows like, the power of YouTube, doesn't it? Yeah, that you well, put it this does. Cont it, content up more than 10 years ago and it's continued yeah. to be yeah. alive uh, content and content that people go right. and, and, and view and it's accumulated, you know millions of views or whatever yeah. over that time so um you can go away from youtube for a while and come back and once you get to a certain point where you have things on that people are interested in they're still going to be searching for electric cars and the type of content early podcast <laughs> content and different things that that you had done um whether yeah. or not you're creating regularly on on that channel and of course now yeah. you're creating a lot more on 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 your youtube channel yeah, what was interesting is the traffic um, to to those older videos is a lot more than what it is on my more modern um, content right. that I'm making because back then th there wasn't a lot of competition, I, I don't believe. And for many years, for probably over 10 years, uh, all those videos really didn't get that much action. It's only been probably in the last four or five years that those videos have started got um, really strong traction. But... But anyway, I didn't want to talk entirely about my experience on on, <laughs> on YouTube, but I think it's it's definitely um, offers a little bit of perspective. So I think as you're starting into podcasting, I'm I'm a little more humble about it now. I'm actually just reached this week the threshold of monetization on on uh, on YouTube, so I can hopefully start making a little bit of income from all those ads that YouTube has been running on my content all these years. <laughs> So, so anyway, that's, that's what's going on with that. But I, I, I wanted to kind of evolve away from that topic into, you know, talking with you because you haven't really been what I would call a podcaster, but, um, I think you've been more kind of on the video live streaming kind of, and that's what your reputation is. Um, but the spotlight on what is a podcast is, hmm. is such an in, important topic right now, uh, especially in the context of of being a podcaster now, why that's significant, um, probably more so now than it ever has been. Um, what's your view on what you think a podcast is today? Because I, I, it's, it's a very controversial topic right now, unfortunately, um, but but it is. I don't know, yeah, what, what's your thought, Ross? So the, the old school people aren't going to like this too much, but I think a podcast is whatever the general public thinks a podcast is. Um, in other words, the traditional definition, right, is it's something that's distributed to wherever, you know, a whole bunch of podcast apps through an RSS feed. The RSS feed uh, basically is a unique, would you call it a URL? It's yeah. a unique, it's a unique um, code, so to speak, that tells all the podcatchers, all the podcast apps, where do I pull this content from? Where do I, mm -hmm. when somebody wants to listen to your podcast, where do I get that audio from? Where's your host uh, that's giving you that RSS feed? Okay, yeah. that's probably, you could do a better technical definition of it than I can, but that's essentially what the technical definition of a podcast is. Um, but that isn't what the popular definition of a podcast is. Most people think, what we're doing here is a podcast. What, not the version that we're going to later distribute through an RSS feed, 
but two people with microphones and cameras mm -hmm. having a conversation, doing an interview, doing a talk show. Most people think that's what a podcast is. And if that's what they think it is, it, in, in my opinion, that's kind of what it is. Because whenever I hear a, a celebrity who's starting a new show on YouTube, and usually the, the YouTube aspect is today, if they're starting, is what they're promoting. They're saying, hey, I got a new podcast. Check out this person's podcast. I'm a guest on this podcast. Watch yeah. it on YouTube. And I generally don't have any idea whether they're distributing it through an RSS feed or not. The fact is this format now has become a podcast and the podcast has become the, the commonly understood lingo for a video or audio talk show that isn't on radio or TV or cable. Yeah. Or satellite. <laughs> right, it's an alternative, right. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to say uh, hello back to Gene P. Uh, or Joseph Cruz, I think is the right way. I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but but thank you. I know we're getting just a flood of comments in here and I wanted to, to address them and involve our, our viewers here and get them engaged. Um, you know, uh, serialized content, um, you can subscribe to. That's and, a good and it's, way to put it in five I mean, words. it is a great <laughs> way, way to put it, e even though that one's even getting a little bit clouded, too, in its mm. perspective. You know, uh, when you say subscription, I think increasingly now that implies it's a paid relationship. Um, mm. where, where I think that the most of the podcasting platforms have been kind of moving more towards kind of this more friendly and less committed in my the view follow <laughs> uh, follow right it's like eh, it's like half-hearted kind of i want to follow you but i'm not really going to engage we're in the early days of podcasting we used that word subscribe and that actually really meant something i think people really kind of had to have confidence that they they um, can do that uh, without having to pay <laughs> right mm -hmm. so so right, i think right. it's an interesting kind of sw twist that's happened in the podcasting space um and then, uh, and then the gizzard, uh, Gary looks like, uh, at swing and dig it, uh, it's a metal detecting. I hope you are right. Uh, I like, uh, the idea of rumble, um, and uh, we just need more traffic there. Um, I agree, you know, and rumble's an interesting, uh, comment here. I don't know that we've addressed it yet, but it is another alternative um, distribution platform that seems to be picking up traction. And I know you've been playing around with it too, and I have as well, um, because I think people these days need to think about potential alternatives to YouTube, especially depending right. on the kind of content they're producing these days. But w what's your observation of Rumble so, so far, um, Ross? I mean, I think it's a very promising platform. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, like you said, if you're doing anything that's a more controversial topic, you're gonna have a lot more leeway on Rumble than you are mm -hmm. on on YouTube. Um, and we streamed a few of our panel shows to Rumble for about three week period. And you know, we did pretty well for not having put anything yeah. on Rumble really. I mean, I've, I've set up my channel where it'll pull some stuff over from YouTube, but that doesn't really do that well. But when we stream it or I also streamed a few recordings, you know, after I had maybe done them on, on another channel or whatever. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's very interesting. I, I think Rumble's got a lot of promise. Um, it would be great if it was a little bit easier to connect when you're multi-streaming because right. you have to put in a new code each each time. And, and sometimes it doesn't connect. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then it's... It's not really what I would consider kind of a podcasting compatible platform, but if you're creating content um, as a video and putting it out as a podcast, um, and that's that distinction really is kind of putting it out as video versus putting it out as audio. And there is such a thing, and I wanted to mention this too, and this is where yeah. things get a little confusing, is that there is such a, a true thing as a video podcast. And this this show is going to be a video podcast as well, which means that there's going to be an RSS feed associated with this video uh, version. And then th there's going to be an audio version. Um, it's not fully rolled out yet because I needed to have a full episode before I could actually get it, get it published. But, right. um, but that's, 
that's what the intent of this show is. It, it, it'll be an example program. And, um, and just to kind of give you a little bit of glimpse in the background to some degree on the things that I'm doing with the show, um, this show is being streamed in, in uh, 1920 by 1080, which is the maximum bandwidth uh, or the screen resolution that StreamYard supports. And what I'm finding is that the computer that I'm using right now uh, doesn't really have the horsepower to really handle that on a live stream. So I'm, I've upgraded my, my desktop computer to be much higher capacity and faster. And I think if you notice when I'm, I'm a little jerky on the video, and that's, that's because of the older computer that I'm using, but I am going to be upgrading. I have it here already, and I was going to show you really quick my, my studio that I have so you can kind of see um what i'm doing here um to some degree hopefully i can find it here easily and you can kind of see what i'm what my my particular studio looks like it's coming in here in a second um and i can talk about this too and this is a this is too it may be a little hard to see because it's probably a, a little small but um i don't know if i can zoom in on that but it's um it's basically a large kind of dinner table is what I have is what, what I'm using. And I have two computers that are mounted on legs on the sides. And then I have all like this tree that sits in the middle of my desk. It's like a pole that goes up that I mount monitors on. And then I have a teleprompter that's sitting. You, you kind of see it up, up here. If you can see my, my cursor, this is a teleprompter up here. And then three screens. And then I have a Rodecaster Pro here, and I have, I mean, you can see my microphone here, but that's my, that's my office setup that I'm doing this show live on. And then I have studio lights up above um, that actually shine down. And that actually provides, and then I've built this background, um, but it actually provides a, a, a really kind of capable kind of home studio. And it wasn't really that expensive to actually build this out. These, these tree poles are like maybe $30, $40, and, and the arms that come off of them are like $20 or something like that. So it's not tremendously expensive to create that kind of a um, kind of a build out. But but to get an expensive camera, I've got a Sony camcorder that is my that's my video camera uh, that, that, that I use. And th this is a high-end microphone uh, with a Rodecaster. This is the Shure um, SM7B, which is, I would say, the, the de facto microphone in the podcasting industry right now. I think <laughs> just about everybody has these things these days, but I bought this back in 2009. So it was actually back when the uh, there was a, uh, oh, I'm trying to blank on the name of it right now, but there was a microphone that was definitely more popular than this one back in 2009. But DR I just liked it. Yeah. The RE20 like the, was in more radio stations when I worked, where I worked in radio, right. than than the SM7B. Right. The SM7B looks good on video, although now <laughs> now the RE20 has a black, sleek looking one, but it looks good on video and it's got kind of a warm sound for like you know, streaming and podcasting from home and other untreated yeah. areas. It doesn't pick up much noise, so it's a really good mic for doing this type of content yeah yeah i want to thank everybody that's watching this that's sending in all the comments uh it's it's kind of difficult for me to keep up with it all but <laughs> but i just want to tell you that i, I appreciate you um sending all the comments and it's been fantastic i mean just um thank you so much and and i really look forward to hearing your your comments in the other places too like maybe over email and things like that i was going to share with you my um my email address. So if you wanted to send me comments or topics that you want me to share on the program, you can certainly send them to me at this address here, uh, rob.greenly at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. You can also share with me uh, comments and things on X or Twitter uh, at, at Rob Greenly. And I do have a website, robgreenly.com. And I'm going to have a website for this show it's just not 100% built yet, but it is uh, right around the corner. I'm, I was actually talking to Ross about this because I'm starting to build it on WordPress, which a lot of podcasters do because the podcast is going to be hosted on Blueberry, uh, which, if you don't know, is a is a long-standing podcast. So it's actually the CEO of Blueberry is my co-host on my new media show I do every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, 
And that's all about the podcast industry. That's kind of like insider information, news and things like that, where this show is really trying to share ideas and tips and give perspective to uh, this convergence strategy is what I'm trying to do. So, so, uh, and if you want, so if you're not currently using StreamYard, I would definitely give it a try. They do have a, a plan you can sign up that's free and that'll help you kind of, kind of get started and, and give it a try and play around with it. I've, I've had a lot of fun playing around with the StreamYard tools. It's almost like a, like a, uh, you know, like a Corolla uh, a crayon set, right? That you can like create all sorts of fun stuff. And, and, um, and so I've had a, a fun time. You can kind of see with the graphics that I'm using with this show is that um, there's all sorts of stuff to do. I know Ross doesn't uh, like me to use this display too much. Hey, you can see that on but the it's, <laughs> but, but, but it's lights. kind of fun, right? <laughs> it's kind of fun to do this one. Um, yeah. But but I can play around with doing stuff um, and coming back to it. You can have custom layouts. You can do all sorts of stuff with that. Um, so I'm excited to be working with them and, and bringing this level of creativity to podcasting is it was something I've always really wanted to do, especially the interactive part of podcasting, which is um, a part that I... I really enjoyed about radio because I used to get phone calls. So people would want to actually just call me on the phone. I would give the phone number out on the radio station and they would call in and I was like, you know, I didn't have a call screen. So I had to do the call screen myself. <laughs> so you never know, you know, if there was a wacko that was going to call me. But back in those days, there, there, there wasn't that many wackos, but I would be a little more concerned about it today. But that's <laughs> that's a whole other topic that I don't want to talk about. But. <laughs> So, so anyway, um, so I think I've shared some of the comments in here. Let, let me see if I can find uh, something else to, somebody else to share here to some degree. Um, trying to say the podcast engineering school is always, that's always a good one. So let me, uh, all right. Ah, the great Chris Karn. Yeah, Chris, uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Chris' comment is R Rumble is very promising. Of course, they need to streamline the experience, etc. But uh, comparing it to YouTube isn't quite fair because YouTube has been around for almost 20 years. Yeah, case in point, I've, I've had videos on YouTube for 17 years. So if that tells you anything, um, but I I agree with you. I think you know having an alternative to, to YouTube is something that we definitely need. Um, so thanks for the for the comment uh and then uh let's see who else can we put up here hey jason uh thanks for the comment i'm quite new to podcasts and so rumble is also new to me so that's good and then uh, thanks for the comment and then also jody krangle which is a fantastic artist uh voice artist that uh, has done a lot of work i know with you ross and Mm -hmm. And I've been on her podcast a few times. So uh, here is where all the comments are. Congrats on the episode. Number one, Rob, great to see you two in conversation. I haven't heard of Rumble uh, and that's an interesting thing to consider. So yeah, I, yeah. Thanks, Jody. Thanks for the comment. And uh, I think she put another one in here too. So I wish mm -hmm. there was an audio only option for having live streaming events that actually had decent audio. <laughs> Clubhouse is dying and LinkedIn audio events, the audio kind of sucks. So I know uh, Jody, you have quite a reputation for creating quality audio. I have to give you that. So I can, I can see you. And I don't know what you think about this. Ross, that <laughs> she's got a terrific perspective and, and a terrific voice uh, and, a, yeah, and a very I haven't skilled done, production I ability. haven't really done um, LinkedIn I, audio events. My, my only thought was, uh, has she tried Twitter spaces um, for, you know, a social audio, live streaming audio yeah. option? And is that any better? And, and that I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I do send our videos live to, uh, to Twitter and it's pretty good quality content. But then I'm usually listening to it later on to check it out on a phone. So I'm not, <laughs> you know, without headphones on or anything. Um, I actually uploaded a full length video to Twitter, something I had never done before over the weekend. And it's kind of interesting. Yeah, so there's a lot of options for putting right. for putting content 
you know, you repurpose through an RSS feed and distribute it on, on audio, but you can also put audio and video content on directly on social media platforms and upload them if you have an audience there or you want to see if an audience mm -hmm. there will respond to it. Yeah, um, we've had a lot of um, comments, actually. Um, James Cridlin from podnews.net uh, just posted a comment here. It says, being on Rumble makes a very strong political statement, <laughs> <laughs> James, uh, which would mean 50% of the people wouldn't uh, go anywhere near the platform, however good technically it is. So... I would comment a little bit on that, James, that uh, I think Rumble still has some bugs to work out. Um, I don't think it's anywhere near as um, reliable, I guess, uh, or consistent as YouTube is today. I don't see a lot of bugs in, in YouTube. I think they've got it pretty pretty refined, but I do see quite a bit on Rumble still. But I, I agree. It's unfortunate that being on a platform is a political statement, but I think that's the sign of the times, right? Yeah, I mean, I started using Rumble before um, I had any thought about what it was or wasn't politically. I was just thrilled that there was another option mm -hmm. other than YouTube. So I'd have another place where I could put content or if anything happened to my YouTube channel. Um, YouTube's kind of the only game in town. I know there's Vimeo, but that tends to be more for art and corporations and people who want to embed something on a website than kind of a social video place where people are having a chat and so forth so um but yeah i mean it does definitely there's a lot of political content on 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 rumble so um it may not be for everybody yeah and that's perfectly fine i think that mm -hmm. having an ecosystem that caters to everyone i think is is has a place um there as well um and then uh looks like we got one uh comment from uh, Ronaldo Thomas, uh, wow, StreamYard, very nice platform of any kind of meetings and live streams. I, I would 100% agree. It actually has a, a component to it that will allow you to do webinars too, So, um, which is a helpful thing to actually do. Um, but I wanted to say thanks to Ronaldo and James for the comments here. Um, it's great. And let's... Uh, before I skip into spending the whole show doing comments, but I would, it's kind of interesting that that's happening. And I, I, I love it actually. It's nice maybe the next episode, comments. maybe it'll just be, uh, <laughs> just based on comments <laughs> and questions. It's nice getting all these comments. Very cool. Oh, it's great. It's, it, it's great. It's streamer has got a great community. Yeah. It's very cool. Well, that's, that's what I, I, I so love about it. And that's, that, that's, what's fantastic about, um, these live streaming platforms is it creates that environment, especially if you can, you can put them all in to the show live. I mean, that's, that's a breakthrough kind of functionality. And I know it's, it's functionality that's being uh, considered in the podcast 2.0 initiative as well, where comments that would come in from all the listening platforms could be, could be potentially collated into one kind of sharing uh, platform. Mm. And then comments could be shared across all the listening apps. So that that's one functionality that's trying in. And I definitely want to cover that, those type of topics in this series in the future is kind of the podcasting 2.0 uh, project initiatives that are being rolled out um, to a lot of the podcast hosts. And what they're trying to do is get that adopted by the listening platforms. And there's other functionality that's coming as well um, that... Um, can kind of create this community and create uh, financial opportunities too um, through alternative um, sources like Satoshi's with Bitcoin and things like that, which there's still a lot of people that don't understand that stuff. And there's still quite a hill to climb with that concept, but that's also something that's active in the podcast space that most people don't know about. So, yeah. um, and so um, I can get back to questions again, but I did wanted to skip through kind of, some of the things that I wanted to talk to you about, Ross, to, to some degree. And, and um, why do you think um, independent content creators are so important now? Um, especially as we think about trust and how we're all kind of questioning. <laughs> well, one of the things I think we've learned starting with when blogging was taking off in the early yeah. to mid 2000s and, you know, now with podcasting and everything, um, 
live streaming video, TikTok, the whole realm of things is we realize how kind of unreliable the mainstream media is and how much they get wrong and how much they are reliant on people in the field who may or may not be feeding them the right information and um and like everybody else they have filters and biases and so forth Mm -hmm. um and so you just get you get so many different views and just because somebody let's say is a columnist at the new york times um doesn't mean that they actually know more about the topic that they're writing about than thousands of people online who may be able to offer more insight more wisdom uh different first-hand experience or different experience from from studying so it's opened up to such a wide range of voices that now we just don't have a few news channels sort of dictating our view of what's going on but you're able to go into different communities and corners and and creators and hear what other people are saying about the issues of the day and Mm -hmm. i mean for me i find watching you know again i going to use the the term podcast but i find watching like long form video podcasts on youtube a very interesting way to learn about people and learn about um concepts or just enjoy entertaining talk around issues that uh, you know I, i'm interested in yeah no i i think i definitely agree with all that and so, so we got to come up from Real Talk Sports. Uh, what is the best way to use my Rodecaster Pro 2 with StreamYard with guests and phone callers? Um, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure that you would be able to do that without a separate interface, especially with uh, phone calls. Um, so it's... Does a Rodecaster have a, like a, a US, a, like, uh, not a USB, but does it have like a lightning or a... Uh, yeah, I mean, you can bring something. in. You can like, bring, I can in, a bring mobile, in. I think. Um, yeah, I can bring in calls on my mobile phone into okay. into in, the roadcaster. Into the roadcaster, so I I could like. I mean, in the past, I I, I used to play um, and contribute to uh, like Clubhouse through mm-hmm. my mobile phone plugged into my roadcaster, and so I could I could simulcast <laughs> to. I could do Clubhouse. I, I tried to do it with uh, spaces. I tried to bring in spaces in here and funnel it into my roadcaster and be able to send it out on a live stream. Uh, but the problem is, is that I couldn't plug um, the TRRS connection into the mobile phone um, and have it. So I, I think spaces has turned off that ability to have it go into a TRRS connection. So it's uh, it was one of those things I'd, I'd love to be on Spaces right now with this show too. Mm-hmm. I think I could probably do it if I was doing it maybe through an iPad or something like that. I, I might be able to create kind of like a inter, interface that would allow it to to do that. So, but it's a, it's an interesting question, especially the Rodecaster uh, Pro 2, which is a more advanced uh, when I have the the original Rodecaster here. But, uh, I believe the Roadcaster Pro 2 does not have the TRRS connection in the back, so you would have to that the one use... the one does have it. Y- well, yeah, yeah, it has okay. a little jack in the back, but you can bring in like I can bring in a uh, Bluetooth connection into the Roadcaster okay. off off my mobile phone, so I could I could transmit phone calls into the Roadcaster just using Bluetooth. So um, right on this show, we you could just look down and see your phone flashing and say, caller, you're on the air. Yeah, you could do that, right? If you had a, yeah. Um, I think you'd have to do it in the Roadcaster uh, Pro 2. I think you have to do it through Bluetooth. Hmm. So, because it doesn't have the TRS connection any longer. So, so that would be um, my comment to that. Thank you for the comment on that and the question. Um, so, so some of these questions are always uh, fairly technical, but that's okay. I mean, I think that's that's one of the things that people struggle with. I know I struggle with it every day here, trying to get new <laughs> things to work. And I've got this uh, stream deck here. I don't know. I think uh, don't you have a stream deck too? I don't. I I've been debating on whether to get one for a while. Oh, you don't? Uh, yeah, I've but I haven't had the time to. <laughs> Try and get it set up. Have you was... seen the foot pedal one? 
Yeah, the foot pedal one, right. I, yeah. I'm thinking I like that. I like it's just put yeah, your foot down they have on one. something right. that I mean, fires you're not your outro they or it fires right. your, uh, your, right. your commercial or whatever. Yeah, you just got to... It's kind of like driving the car. I think at certain times, I don't think you want to push the brake versus the yeah. gas or the gas versus the brake, right? So how would you do that when you can't see your feet? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oops, I, I pushed the wrong pedal on the floor, right? <laughs> right. So, um, so boy, we're, we're, we're starting to get a lot of those technical questions in the door here. Um, so I'm, I'm being told that the background noise is starting to get annoying. So is that true for everybody? <laughs> I was trying to make this feel like a like a game, you know, like a video game or something like that because I figured that that's that would sound cool. <laughs> Take a vote. <laughs> <laughs> vote. No background music, or do you like background music? I mean, I could actually change the background music to a different song if that would be better. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I was playing around with that. So. That's another capability that, that that StreamYard has. So like I can get in here and uh, I created this music bed in here and it's called, um, uh, it, it's a little gentler. So I'll, I'll, I'll switch it out here. And, and it's kind of a fairly popular, it's actually, this song has a strong connection to YouTube where it's actually um, used a lot in, um, in what's called lo-fi videos, hmm. which is our animated uh, videos on YouTube that play this very soothing and relaxing music of a young girl uh, writing in her journal near a window. And there's a cat on the window that's uh, looking out the window and she occasionally reaches over and pets the cat and then goes back <laughs> to writing in her journal again. And it just It's like this repeating video. So anyway, I'll let you listen to this song. But, but anyway, yeah, I hope this is less annoying, but, but anyway, let's get back to the show. <laughs> Reminds me of nightlife in the nineties. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We get the, uh, you know, it's a, it's a little more soothing, Sonia. So hope, hope, hopefully it'll make your, your evening go, go a little better when you're watching the show. But, but anyway, um, so let's, let, let's kind of talk about another topic re really quick is um, what, what are you seeing in trends around advancements of kind of video cameras and kind of remote browser-based audio and re recording. I know StreamYard is, is a browser-based solution, so I'm actually using it in Chrome right now. But uh, StreamYard did announce that they have a mobile app now for guests. I don't know if, it, Ross, if you heard oh, about really? this, but it just no, rolled I out. No, I didn't hear that. Right, so they have an iOS app now that will enable you to bring in guests into your program. So you could have used your your ios um, iphone to join the show today so i could to. download this app right now yep it's in the app store in, i mean i'll uh, focus on the show but i'm just excited <laughs> <laughs> so well you can <laughs> i can have two versions of you i can have one that's, camera that's here much. and then i can have another one <laughs> from a different angle that's far here. too much <laughs> that's, that's far too much i know this show is is rapidly becoming much more than a podcast topic show, isn't it? Uh, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, to answer that question, I know I've been playing around with a bunch of new cameras and things like that. Uh, I don't know if you've been playing around with any of that stuff, Ross. You know, when I'm out in the field, I used to just go live right from, well, years ago, I used to carry all this stuff around with me. And I realized the advantage when you're out and about is just having your phone and if you're comfortable going live on your phone or you have a little bit of gear that you use with your phone, that's great. And I used to live stream right to Facebook or YouTube from my phone. Uh, but now, I mean, I use the, the web version, the, the mobile web version, like the uh, Safari version in, in iOS on my phone and I'll use StreamYard. So I'll mm -hmm. just go into StreamYard and I'll, I'll go live in that even if i'm interviewing people in person or whatever i still i'll still usually use Streamyard because i'm just so comfortable with it now and 
Um, I can multi-stream if I want to from it. So you can pretty much do almost everything from your from your phone um, yeah. that you do. You have your assets are in there, so you can put your logo up or your your you know your banners, and you can put comments on the screen. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, I'm not I don't do a ton of that stuff when I'm live, but it's just nice to have a familiar web based service that you're comfortable with like something that you just it's just second nature to you to use Streamyard. it looks slightly different on the phone but it's so familiar and comfortable that it doesn't catch me by surprise like when you know between one time going live and the next time facebook's changed around there the way their app looks and i'm wondering if this is the button to turn off the show <laughs> where well, you kind of right. know with Streamyard everywhere everything is you know it's going to be stable and you know you're going to get a good recording from it no matter what happens with with your live you're probably going to get a pretty good recording from mm -hmm. from Streamyard. yeah i think it's a good good move to to start moving more towards the the mobile um, app side so hopefully they'll at some point have an android app too that will do do similar things and then, you know, I, I would think, and I'm just speculating here, I don't know any inside information per se, but um, that they'll be adding more capabilities to this app as well. So you hopefully you'll be able to do your whole show from this app. Um, I would think that, that that would be a reasonable expectation because I think that there's some capabilities that can be built into an iOS um, app that uh, are maybe more capable than what is possible in a, in a browser based experience, which is usually right. limited based on the libraries that are available uh, for that browser to support, which is not always in the control of the developer. So it's, um, it's, it's just a more robust um, capable um, tool, right. To, to create content with. And I, I've been working with a lot of, mobile apps for a long time with a lot of stuff that I do. I know I have probably like, probably have like six apps on my iOS phone that will enable <laughs> recording of something. Right. And it's, it's a little ob overwhelming. Um, oh, so um, we did get a question, Ross, uh, wh what camera are you using these days? So I'm using the Sony a 6,400. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a mirrorless uh, camera Oh, okay. It's it's got um basically it's unlimited live streaming. It doesn't shut off after a period of time. It's unlimited re well, it's not unlimited. It's you, you can record for as long as you have, you know, SD cards and such to use, but um it doesn't overheat. It's it's just a really good streaming camera. Um when I got it, my thought was that I would take it with me. Um and then when I'm doing stuff remote I would use that camera as well. Um, and then the pandemic hit and I've gotten so comfortable with not moving it. Um, and, and so since things have started opening up again, I've, I've more used my phone on the road, but at home, that's the, the camera I, I, I stream with. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a version called the 5100, a 5100 that mm -hmm. if you don't need certain things like a certain audio, port or a couple other little features that this has um very affordable and the, the video quality is probably not much different mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm i'm using a sony 4k camcorder um okay. so is what, what i'm using but i i i do think back on the i probably would have preferred to have a you know a mirrorless um slr type camera like what you have there Ross, uh, what would have been my preference, but when I bought this camera, I think it was like, um, 2020, 2021 and all of the camcorders, webcams, everything were all sold out. <laughs> all of right, the, right. the SLR cameras were all sold out. The, the only thing that wasn't sold out was camcorders. So mm -hmm. it, that, that, that was back during that time when, when zoom was exploding and, and these platforms right. were. Uh, more people working from home and and it was very amusing to watch all these mainstream media personalities uh, start doing their shows from home and how uh, bumpy of a ride that was mm. for them. <laughs> Not used to having that whole team around them uh, right, to set exactly. everything up and the, the gear that can't leave the station and all that. 
right? It was um, the era that all, all the mainstream media personalities became podcasters is kind of what I called it back then. So <laughs> it was like, welcome to our world. Right. 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 <laughs> So yeah, I have a little cam, I have two little camcorders. I have this, like, I have this, uh, Canon one, mm-hmm. um, that I got to use with like a hardware encoder. If I were to go live without using a computer mm-hmm. and then I have a really small Sony action camcorder, um, that weighs like next to nothing, but I mm-hmm. just don't find I use them that much because there's more involved in setting them up and the charge and yeah how you how you connect it to something else and so forth versus the phone where everything's all in one and the video quality is pretty good you can you know you can record in 4k on your phone or you can record in, or you go live in 1080p and it's it's good quality yeah. i think this this camera has 4k i'm 99 percent sure but i just it probably never does tried. right my 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 uh sony my studio cam that i'm using i've just never never tried it i've always gone 1080 yeah and and just to kind of you know for 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 those that are currently using like maybe a usb camera or something like that um to be able to use one of these cameras does require this little um trans translator device that you have to plug into because a lot of these cameras have an output that is a signal that's uh, not compatible with your computer so you have to get this it's like an elgato kind of kind of video converter that takes um takes the signal from your camera and funnels it through this and then it outputs it into a usb format that you can plug into the back of your computer so that's kind of how working with a a mirrorless slr or a camcorder you kind of have to do that where most of the webcams you just plug into the back with the usb and you're you're good to go but it's it's a little more involved to have one one of these um higher end cameras, um, no, no question. And a lot of people don't realize that when they get going with it. Cause I struggled at the beginning when I was trying to do it myself. It's like, well, what kind of, you know, kind of device do I have to get? And it's like, <laughs> well, they're all available on Amazon. Um, I was looking so, to see if I got the Elgato. Yeah. Here it is. Here it is. I mean, it's a, it's it almost be like a little expensive. thumb drive. The, yeah, exactly. The Elgato 4k and yeah. you plug that in USB into your computer and the other end, uh, comes from your camera um, mm-hmm. using a, like an HDMI connection to your camera. And I liked this a lot when I got it because before I had been using one that instead of plugging directly in, you had to have a wire coming into it, a wire coming out of it, and then going into your computer. Mm-hmm. Um, right now I'm using the ATEM Mini, which I really could, I could use for multicam, but I'm just not doing multicam right now. Um, but I find that it's as a capture card, it's, it's fantastic. Like the, the quality is just really good. And the cost is, you know, the same as, as a capture card. And it's got like four ability to plug four cameras into it. You can even take your phone and plug it in. If you wanted to switch on that, Mm -hmm. um, the switching is a little different. Like, uh, I joke that it's my fade the black machine. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's a fancy characteristic there or capability i'm sure it was all worth it right which i yeah yeah it's a 600 dollars fade the black machine which is now probably two 225 295 right. something like that i mean it's pretty good you can't play video clips off of it directly but you could hook another device into it right um, but you do get multi-cam with the with the pro or above so you can see what like all your different cameras are uh, before you pick the one you want to go to. If you're changing on that and then you just run the final switched version, like whatever your final version is, you run that into your computer and into StreamYard. So I just select the ATEM Mini Pro as my camera. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, hello back to Jaden. Thanks for the, <laughs> the comment. It's good to... Good to get uh, the continued flow of comments, which I, I don't know if I'm going to have time to display them all, but I'm going to give it a good shot. <laughs> so so I w- wanted to mention, too, that the music that I was playing, that everybody was kind of like, turn it off. Um, I wouldn't say everybody was saying that, but just a couple <laughs> people. Um, um, was provided, it's a royalty-free platform. Um, 
uh, the track, the last track I was saying was something brilliant. Uh, you know, Harris Heller um, at uh, sinpai.tv slash stream beats. So I would, I would go there if you're looking for some YouTube music or podcast music. It's actually um, royalty free. You don't have to pay anything and it's, you can get in and cut them up and use them. And I mean, I created a special version of that, which was what, what I was playing before. So it's, it's an interesting, and I know some other channels on StreamYard have recommended the, the same, you know, hmm. um, Melanie uh, was um, talking about the same platform. So it's, right. it's actually good to make sure that whatever music that you're using in your podcast or in your YouTube channel um, won't cause a problem for you because hmm. I, you know, YouTube is checking and they will analyze your, your audio and um, match it up to their database of music tracks that they have relationships with the creators. And if you have a copyright strike there, that can be a problem for you. So uh, just make sure what, whatever music that you're using is um, not going to get you in hot water. And it's the same with the podcasting um, mm -hmm. side too. If you're even creating audio is that just make sure because there are, there are platforms that are scanning for copyrighted music and um, it may not cause a problem for you, but you never know. So you might get that cease and desist letter and say you owe $10,000 <laughs> next week. And I don't think any of us want that. <laughs> hey, I wanted to mention um, Stuart is in the comments and he says the Sony ZV-E10 has USB for video. Yeah, um, I think um, so those are the like, cameras. They're like more direct, like the point right. and shoot size. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're mirrorless. Like almost all of these are mirrorless, right? But it's more yep. of a point and shoot, like high end point and shoot, I believe. Stuart can mention in the chat if I'm way off here, but I think it's more like a high end point and shoot than a SLR style mirrorless, right? Uh, right. Or mirrorless, uh, what we think of as a mirrorless, but. It's um, if you plug that in USB, I'm sure it's pretty good quality and it's very lightweight. I don't know that it ha I don't know what the price range is, but I do see like a lot of vloggers like to take those with them because it's it's mm -hmm. pretty lightweight and easy to use. Um, you know, all these cameras have automatic settings and stuff, but yeah. uh, for whatever reason, the ZV. E10 is pop is has become very popular among vloggers and um, yeah. some streamers. Yeah, I'm also a, a fan of, and I bought this camera um, um, f for a family member is um, the Insta 360 um, webcam. Yeah, so that's it's, cool. It's a well, I mean, it's not the 360 degree camera. It's the Insta 360 brand web camera, and it's basically an AI oh. camera that has kind of um, tracking capability in it so you just mount it on top of your monitor plug it in via usb and it it has a mind of its own so it basically will follow you so if i decide to that i want to go over here and it'll it'll move the camera it'll it's actually got a built-in gimbal on it um hmm. which means that that has the, the ability of up and down and sideways and stuff like that so it can actually track you would actually mount it on your your monitor it will have the, the ability, you just click a button in the software and it will actually point down. So if you wanted to do like a demo of something um, on the, um, on your table, and th this isn't for audio podcasters, but th this is for those that want to create like unboxing videos or anything like that for, for YouTube, that this camera is really cool with that because it'll, it'll it's capable of tracking downward onto your right. desk. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people have to mount these booms that come out um, mm -hmm. that have a camera that's pointed straight down, right? So right. then you have to do a switcher and switch cameras and stuff like that. And that's it's actually one of the cool things about the Insta360 video cameras. Generally, I've got the 360-degree, the X3 um, also. And that camera actually takes 360-degree videos um, that are very versatile. It's almost like having a two-camera shoot. Um, if you use one of those cameras properly, but yeah, we're kind of getting so, way off. So and I think web... this camera is actually able to be a web camera too, which I haven't played so, with yet. So your webcam version, you're not using it now, but you could use it as a second camera and switch to you switch to it 
if you wanted to say like you write on a whiteboard behind you or exactly. do something or you're moving around and it'll move with you instead of being like obvious Ross is moving to try and get, yeah. you know, like find his Elgato 4K or whatever, yeah, right? It has like these, it'll move these, with you. Yeah, it has these uh, gestures that you give it like this L shape like, like this and it'll actually zoom in. So it'll, if you just hold your hand up and the camera will actually zoom in on you um, and get, get closer to you. And then you drop your hand and it will back up again. So it's, it's, it's really kind of interesting how it has that ability to sense um, motion and, and take direction. I guess that's um, something you do before you record generally, right? <laughs> no, it's actually right in the middle stream, of the recording. You could do, can you do yeah. it right in the middle of a live stream or whatever? Yeah. It doesn't... Yeah. Well, yeah, I think you could do it on a live stream. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So it's interesting. But anyway, that's very cool. Yeah. So it's, uh, <laughs> so it's, it, it, it's always fun to share that kind of stuff. It says, Oh, it looks like Jody posted a question. Um, Let's say my live 360 webcam. So she's got the same. It has 4K capabilities and does Very follow cool. movement. It's a great little unit. Yeah, it's got it's got a large sensor too, which is another characteristic that you want to find in a video camera. Is that the the larger the lens, the larger the sensor, and that, that's what you have, Ross. There with that mirrorless, is you've mm -hmm. got a large sensor, which um, is capable of capturing more light right into yeah. your camera, which gives you the, the ability for more spectrum of color and clarity. Um, right. And it also allows you to film in low light situations too. So if you want to create this, like, like what I have here, I've got a very large um, uh, lens on this, my camcorder and, and it creates that kind of like that, that kind of um, dark background. And I mean, I'm close enough to my background where it's not out of focus, but I know that some people have it further back which means that if it's focused right. on you the background's going to be fo um, out of focus but it's close enough to me where it's in focus <laughs> I, I like seeing like in your setup i really like seeing the real background because it's interesting <laughs> yeah right i mean it, maybe it's a little distracting too i i kind of like the backgrounds that sometimes that are just very simple and one color and and but but it's always it, it's been proven in research um that, that i've seen here recently that um, the audience thinks that you're much more intellectual and um, there, there's a um, much more potential that you could learn if what's in your background is a bunch of books, right? It's this whole <laughs> library psych psychology, right? It's like uh, if, if you have a bunch of books, you must read a lot. So you must be smart, right? That's the, that's the mental messaging that's going out. Well, I, I saw like RFK Jr. on a podcast and he mm -hmm. was sitting in front of what had to be a green screen full of books unless he unless some public library allowed him to do the podcast interview in front of books. But, um, yeah, you see a lot of like politicians and famous people and newscasters and stuff when they're on a podcast or whatever, or they're they're calling in their their report from home or guesting from home. They always find either they're using a green screen or they find that room where they got the bookcase behind them. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's, it, it's fascinating to me. I've always um, thought that, you know, and then I immediately, after I saw that research, I, I went out and bought, a, you know, got a bunch <laughs> of books up here. So it's like, of course I want people to think that I'm smart. So, but I also think that it's smarter to show that I have a bunch of microphones too, if I'm a <laughs> podcaster, right? <laughs> So I have that too, but well, you got room for a lot of stuff there in your setup. So I do, but when I'm on camera, though, th th there's kind of a limited view, right? So right. it's it's kind of uh, you know high high priority locations, I might say. Um, you know, you know, you have to be careful about that. But but it, uh, I don't. I mean, let's uh, make sure that we kind of cover the you know some last comments. You know what, uh, Ross, I didn't even get through half of the topics I wanted to talk about. Wow. And this is a learning lesson for me because um, the the audio um, is going to go out and it's going to be great because, you know, I read the questions. Right. So even the audio listeners to this are going to you know get the context of what we're talking about. I mean, uh, I think that that's another big component of this convergence strategy is making sure that 
anything you show on the screen that you're describing um, as much as you can. So your audio listeners can pick up on that. So yeah. I think it's, it's important, but uh, Stuart uh, made a comment uh, here too. It was think media's go to for a lot of their team. Uh, yeah, I think he's talking about the Sony. The ZV. Uh, yeah. The, or whatever. The, oh. the ZV uh, E1. Um, which is a full frame version. The and one the he had E10. mentioned earlier. Yeah, ZVE10 maybe was the one yeah. we were talking about yeah. earlier. Yep. So there's Maybe lots of choices out there and it's always complicated to, to figure out which is the right one for you. Um, you know, and it's say the coffee talk said, no, it's the same as the a six forty of 400. Uh, say so if you plug it in, it's only 720 uh, P. So, so without a capture card, so you can get higher resolutions with the capture card. Uh, I think you can get up to 4K with most of the capture cards today. So, and that would be compatible if you want. I mean, most people aren't streaming live in 4K. I mean, it's I'm I I max this one out. I think I mentioned it at the earlier part of the show. I'm I maxed I maxed it out at 1080p. So it's right. it's 1920 by 1080p is what, what what it is what I'm streaming right now, and that's what's taxing my old computer. <laughs> <laughs> So that's why I'm a little jerky on the video. So hopefully next week I'll be fully converted over to my new Core i9 uh, processor with a twice as fast uh, graphics card. So, so hopefully that'll make You can a... check the local recording. It might be perfectly smooth on the local that you get from StreamYard. Yeah, and there's some new recording. announcements that are coming um, from StreamYard. Uh, I can't really say anything about it yet, but th there's, there's some exciting new features and capabilities in the platform that are coming in the coming um, weeks that will help better support podcasters and also um, have have some capabilities around um, local recordings that they currently don't have today. So, Very so cool. that's that's uh, that's exciting to actually think about it as we think of this platform as a, as a podcast creation platform too. So, so, yeah. but Ross, I think I'm going to call the episode to a close. I think we've gone over an hour and I think a lot of people probably want to uh, do something different with their evening other than just <laughs> listen to us. I'm sure they've had fun and we've had fun <laughs> being here with you and, and um, talking to you and hearing your comments and, and we so appreciate you and, and thank you so much for, for spending your evening with us and, I'll, uh, I'll be back next week. I do have a, another guest coming on next week, and it's going to be uh, Jamie Megaletta, who is a, a running her own company now. She's uh, running a company called Unscripted Productions Management. She's a freelance TV producer um, and a podcast developer and host. Uh, she's actually previously the show producer or a show producer for CNN and Fox News. Um, so she's got a lot of kind of commercial television production experience and she's getting into podcasting. She's a Harvard graduate. So it's going to be interesting conversation with her. And thank you, Ross, so much uh, for, for spending your evening with me here on the inaugural show. So yeah, thank thanks so much. so much for having me. Uh, I'm honored to be on the first show. I appreciate yeah. it. I'm excited and thank you so much for joining me tonight. I can't thank you enough. And it's, uh, it's really, um, it's, it's really an honor to be here. This is really the first show live show that I've done on, on my own. I've been doing live shows for a long time, but this is really, this is a, a big moment for me as well. I've been doing a lot of stuff, uh, pre-recorded, um, but doing a, a fair amount of stuff live too, but I've always been like the co-host, not the host. Right. So, <laughs> So it's one, one of those things. So they, take that yeah. that prime seat there. You got to take the power that's, seat. That, and that's right, <laughs> exactly. So so there was a lot of responsibility sitting in a seat like this, and I I take it very seriously, and and I, I I'm trying to evolve my hosting skills too, even around trying to become a better solo host too. So if I need to do this show solo, I can I can do it, but it's it's. I think it's more fun to have a guest um, on, on, on here that can add some color commentary to my <laughs> otherwise green and black background. So more color is good. So, right. 
Thanks, Rob. So, I really appreciate it. You, you're awesome. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, come back and join me next uh, next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific. And uh, on um, November 2nd, I'm going to be out of town. So I won't be able to do the show that week, but I'll be back with a terrific guest um, that's going to be on November 9th, that's going to be focused on talking about AI tools in podcasting. And he's got quite a quite a red hat reputation. So um, it's going to be an interesting conversation with him too. So you don't want to miss that show either. So, so anyway, good night. Thank you so much. And I'll take you out with a little video and I'll probably play a, a, a little bit of, of that old music that everybody was uh, hearing earlier in the program. And I'll take you out of the, the show with that. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. And see you next time on Podcast Tips. Rob Green. Well, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs>